Hi, we're going to do the go through the theory of the one-dimensional finite element, um, and then we're going to solve a problem with ANSYS uh, Classic, ANSYS Workbench, and SolidWorks. That's going to be those will be separate uh, videos. This will go through the um, really the matrix method, and that's the the exciting thing about the one-dimensional element is it really goes through the and it shows the clear process on how all elements are solved in finite element analysis. And uh, it kind of strips away the energy methods and the shape functions and the things like that that, that kind of um, uh, uh, don't make it as clear as far as the, the process. So sometimes this is referred to as the direct formulation. Uh, element names are typically bar, truss, or spar. Uh, so if we looked at a typical truss uh, structure here, and we just kind of zoom in on one uh, one degree of freedom element here. So we pull that, we pull this out, and uh, so we have uh, a link here that has a length, it's got an area, and it's got a modulus of elasticity. Um, here's a, there's an analogy of a spring here that this has a certain stiffness to it, and from this load, it, uh, there's this um, change in length. And we know that uh, there's a relationship between the forces and the deflections, and that is the modulus of elasticity. And so if we write the equation here, modulus of elasticity is equal to stress over strain. In our case, the stress is just this force divided by the area. The strain here is equal to this change in length over the original length. And uh, so that's what we have right there. Now we kind of rearrange the terms here a little bit and we end up with this equation that F equals change in length times EA over L. So if we look at it, it's similar to the spring equation where F equals KX. And so we can see that um, uh, there's a direct relationship here that's this displacement uh, change in length is X and this K is equal to EA over L. So the important thing here is that the stiffness of bar elements has just been identified as being EA over L. So uh, let's go through the details of one element. So, <clears throat> so if we write this in a form where we pick in a positive X direction and if you, see, if you assume that your forces and displacements are positive to the right and uh, when you go through the analysis the signs will take care of themselves so our unknowns here are forces displacements and this uh, stiffness K which is equal to AE over L so if we start with let's write an equation for node 1 we have the unknowns are related to node 1 are force 1 displacement 1 and displacement 2. So we have the spring equation here, F equals KX. So the displacement is U1 minus U2. So, uh, and it needs to be U1. In order for this force to be positive, things need to be consistent. So let's say U2 was 0. If U2 was 0, then F is positive because K times U1 is positive it's consistent. So we can remove the K with the AE over L and here is the equation for node 1. F equals AE over L times U1 minus U2. So then we can do the same thing at node 2. Here the unknowns are F2, U2, and U1. So we have F2 equals K times U2 minus U1 and it needs to be U2 minus U1 for the the directions and the displacements to be consistent. You can go through and plug some numbers in to uh, verify that. So here's the equation for node 2. F2 is equal to AE over L times U2 minus U1. So now we have to assemble this for the stiffness matrix of the element. So we have these two equations that we just identified. Now we put these in matrix form. So the first one you can see is F1 equals AE over L times U1. 
minus AE over L times U2. So there's equation one. Equation two here, F2 is equal to negative, negative AE over L times U1 plus AE over L times U2. So this is the element stiffness matrix. So this is for bar elements, one, one degree of freedom elements. Uh, this is the um, um, element stiffness matrix. So let's do a problem here. Let's just pick, do something simple and uh, just a bar with two different cross sections. And we'll just say AE over L equals 100 for the small section. AE over L for the big section is 1,000. We'll apply a load of 10 uh, in the middle here. So if we break that down into a finite element uh, model, we have four nodes and we have three elements. Uh, of course, we have to have a node here to, so we have a location to apply that load. So if we look at the element one uh, equation, the stiffness uh, matrix, we have <clears throat> F1 is equal to 100, that was the AE over L from before, times U1, and minus 100 times U2. So it's the same matrix that we had just before. Uh, so it's plus, minus, minus, plus. It's the same, so we're just plugging in the AE over L that we have for this, the 100 here. So there's, uh, there's the uh, stiffness matrix for equation one, so uh, for element one. So for element two, it's really the same, although we're talking about node two and node three. So we have force two, force three, displacement two, displacement three. This looks the same. Uh, then for element three, um, we have the bigger section here. So at element three, that uh, is node three and node four. So for element three, we have a thousand and negative thousand, negative thousand, thousand, and we have the correct uh, node numbers on there. Then we have to assemble the, the stiffness matrix into the global stiffness matrix. So we have our four unknown forces. We have our four unknown displacements. And so we have to expand this and here's how it ends up adding up. Of course, we know that um, from the first element, it was really these terms right here. F1 equals 100 times U1 minus 100 times U2. And the rest of these were zero. That's the only, this is the only thing that element one added. So element two was F2, F3, and U2, U3. So that was this uh, part of the stiffness matrix that was 100, negative 100, negative 100, and 100. And you can see here that uh, there's a combination here that was added uh, related to uh, F, F2 and U2. Uh, so uh, then for element 3, it was F3, F4. Here's the contribution of, F, of element 3. So you can see these terms that are, are combined right here. And uh, here's kind of another look at it. Uh, stiffness from, from element one, stiffness from element two, and stiffness from element three. Basically, they're just, we add the terms to complete the global stiffness matrix. So now let's apply the loads. We can see that um, uh, from before, what did we have? We had um, okay, we had zero displacement at U1, we had zero displacement at U4, and we had a load of 10 at node 2. Okay, that's consistent with what we have here. And so we take the assembled matrix, now we add up those numbers to come up with the assembled matrix. Um, and we knew that F2 was equal to 10. F3, there wasn't any load there. And we knew that displacement U1 and U4 were zero. So really then, now we have to solve for displacements. So just by looking at this, you can see that uh, these two equations right here, we have two equations 
and two unknowns. So that's the first step is, is solving for displacements. So we just uh, uh, plug this in down there. Of course, uh, the computer would use another technique, but uh, here is you could use um, uh, Gauss elimination, uh, uh, several different methods. So uh, we're just going to plug this in. So we have 10 equals negative 100 times 0, uh, 200 times u2 minus 100 times u3 and 0 times 0. So that's this equation. Here's the second equation. And so this uh, reduces to this form. And from this form, um, uh, you can solve it direct, directly. u2 is equal to 5.2381 times 10 to the negative 2. Displacement at node 3 is 4.7619 times 10 to the negative 3. Um, from that, we can plug back in those displacements and plug those displacements back in right here and then we can solve for the forces and uh, once these displacements are known we can solve for F1 and F4 so F1 and F4 ends up uh, being that equation and these are, the, these are the reaction forces at F1 and F4 opposite direction add them together where it's, things are consistent, uh, minus 10 uh, keeps the bottle, uh, the body in equilibrium. Okay, so we'll do another video of uh, a real problem. And so we really have to break it down into uh, the areas, the modulus, elasticity, and the lengths. So element 1 and 2, the small section that we had 100, we'll just pick a cross-sectional area. We'll use a round bar with a cross-sectional area of 0.5, a length of 5, modulus elasticity of 1,000. And so here's the diameter uh, based on that. So for the big element, we'll use, uh, that was 1,000, we'll use an area of 10, length of 10, and again the same modulus elasticity. Here's the diameter of that bar. So there'll be another video for ANSYS Classic, ANSYS Workbench, and SolidWorks. Thanks for watching.